All right, guys, it's absolutely a beautiful morning for a change, and we are uh, getting ready to head out on the next one. Got the uh, track hoe pulled up to the Derby Market here, getting us a little bit of fuel. But uh, this is kind of a good news, bad news scenario type job. Let me, uh, let me finish getting this track hoe topped off with fuel, and we'll head on down the road here, and I will show you what I'm talking about. All right, guys, here's what we got going on. This house here belongs to a good friend of mine from high school. Unfortunately, the bad news is, I don't know if you can see up there, but they had a major house fire and the inside of the house is a total loss a couple of weeks before Christmas. The good news is him and the kids were home and everybody got out safe. So thank goodness for that. So I'm gonna try to help the guy out and do what I can to uh, to give them a helping hand in a bad time and we got to get this thing on the ground i don't know if you can see but it's a very large two-story house let me give you a quick walk around and show you a few of the obstacles we got so one of the first things we got going for us is the house is actually on the dang property line the house is the property line so we're going to try to get everything to go that way second thing is we got a little bit of room here but we're right on the main main drag in town and then of course as always we got power lines overhead so Matt with him and our excavation, uh, he's the one I helped tear down the other house that had burnt down. He's gonna come repay the favor and help me get this one on the ground safely so we don't end up on the neighbor's property or in the road because those are not good scenarios. So house is locked up now. I can't get in, but hopefully before we uh, knock this thing down, I'll give you guys a little bit of a walkthrough, kind of show you the fire damage. And then we'll start putting her on the ground. But for right now, I gotta go to city hall and uh, get all the permits, the demo permits, make sure all the paperwork's in order. So whenever we start tearing this thing down, we don't have no issues, then we'll get to work. Well, that's a pleasant surprise and absolutely awesome. The uh, homeowner went on, went, took it upon himself and uh, got the permit. So we're good to go, folks. All permitted up and ready to destroy a house. All right, guys, figured I'd just give you a little walkthrough real quick before we, uh, tear it down, just to the downstairs, they had, uh, had some water damage from the fire. But for the most part, it's uh, it's pretty good. Just kind of a well-built old house. Uh, the main fire was right above right above this room here, so that's where the majority of the damage is at. But the uh, real destruction is upstairs. So uh, we'll swing over and take a look at that real quick. Show you what you got. They tried to salvage as much as they could in here to uh, put in the new house, but but the main fire started in this room right here. And from what I've been told and understand, it was an electrical outlet right underneath, electrical outlet right underneath that window there. As you can see, this room here is toasted pretty good. This here is the uh, kids' room, and you can tell it got pretty warm in here. Like I said, thank, uh, thank goodness everybody got out okay. Because um, all three of the bedrooms are pretty toasted. Look at all the black soot. Isn't that amazing? But the crazy part is you go all the way up to the attic, A little bit of fire damage over there, but for the most part, the attic's pretty good. I just find it kind of interesting how uh, the fire travels and how it kind of does what it does. And it's predictable in some aspects, I guess, but it also kind of unusual. Uh, oh, here, for example, I'll show you. Look at this wall. There's almost an exact line where the fire was from there up. And nothing from here down. Uh, perfect example of why they tell you to get low in a fire and not high. It's just uh, just wild how that how that works. I don't know if you guys find it interesting. Oh, hold on, try not to fall on the steps here. I don't know if you guys find it interesting, but I just kind of think it's neat to uh, see how it travels around and how it does what it does. And I mean, heck, this room here right below wouldn't even know anything had happened, but the oak top has burned off, so. 
trying to get a few last things in place this morning and tomorrow's the day she is uh, coming down she'll be a pile of rubble within a couple hours hopefully is the plan so still got a perfectly good commode over there be my one one should be able to sell it cheap so all right guys that's it it's the last time we'll be in this house next time you see it it'll be uh have a track i'll bucket through the side of it I don't know if you guys can see, but first thing this morning, I had to get water, and I can't back my trailer up far enough because the building's there. And I got absolutely soaking wet. It's a great way to start the day. All right, guys, there was so much going on this morning that it's just absolutely impossible to uh, convey it all on video as it was going down. So let me do my best to give you kind of a lay of the landscape, if you would, kind of a little, uh, little idea of what was going on this day so after i got my early morning unplanned shower yeah that was lovely uh we finally got the pump hooked up i uh, got the water going there goes luke uh, he's spraying some water in there we ended up spraying about three thousand gallons of water in this house as it was coming down and uh we had a little bit of dust get away from us here and there but uh for the most part it, it went pretty darn smooth so uh First things first, like I said, this house belonged to uh, a good friend of mine from high school. And um, this, this was a tough day for him, guys. It, it honestly was. This was actually the house he grew up in as a kid. And uh, then whenever he got older and had his own family, he, he bought this house from his parents. His parents bought another house just uh, kind of around the corner. And he's currently been raising his family there. So, you know, him, he has a lot of families, that, a lot of memories there from childhood and then he also has all the memories he created with his family so um pretty tough uh this, this house has been part of his life for a long time so it was, it was pretty tough on him to um uh, see it go down so we were uh, as always trying to do it as professionally and uh, as respectfully uh, as possible i guess you would say so they were there the entire day and uh, we, we stayed and communicated with them and made sure everything was good and uh, I believe they were pretty, pretty pleased with the, the process. So. <clears throat> the other thing is, as you'll see here in a minute, uh, we'll have some drone footage. Got some pretty good drone footage of this. Uh, obviously, I'm pretty, uh, pretty busy here operating the Traco, so I did not do any of the flying. Uh, Ian Jarbo, he's a local drone pilot here. It has a business called Feed the Giant and does a lot of work for real estate agents and different people, so on and so forth. He was nice enough to come down and uh, grab the control of my drone and uh, try to get you guys some pretty good, pretty good footage of this. Uh, I'll put a link to his Facebook page uh, in the description here. He's also the one that did the intro to my uh, Dirt Perfect page, and he's actually working on a new one for me now. I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's going to be cool. Uh, he also did my logo. Uh, pretty creative, just really neat guy. He's uh, he's kind of part of me getting started in YouTube as well. So. I'll throw a link to his Facebook page in the description. You guys are looking for any work for as an intro or, <coughs> excuse me, intro or <coughs> a logo or anything along those lines. Uh, it don't matter where you're located at. He'll be he'll be more than happy to uh, help you out for sure. The other person I owe a huge, huge, huge uh, thanks to is uh, Matt Finley, uh, M&R Excavation. He owns a very similar excavating company to uh, what I have here. And uh, we work we work really well together. If you guys watch my other video, I think it's just simply called 15th Street, uh, which was a deadly fire we had in the town about three miles north of here. Uh, he's the one that actually had the contract to tear that house down. And because of the pro close proximity to the neighbor's house, he asked me to uh, come in and give him a hand just to kind of help protect uh, the neighbor's house and make sure everything went as planned. So. Uh, he was nice enough to return the favor for me today, and he went above and beyond big time. Uh, as you'll see here in a little bit, I was making fun of his track all day because he painted it orange. looks like a Harley Davidson paint scheme. Kept asking where the Kickstarter was at in the oil leak. He didn't think it was too funny, but I did. Anyways, he, uh, he come down with his machine, and he's actually sitting in the neighbor's driveway over here. He's basically doing the same thing I did for him. We're just trying to make the, the wall of the house is the property line. Uh, and it's inevitable we were going to get a little bit of stuff on the neighbor's property, but we were just trying to make sure that half the house didn't end up over there. Uh, and then this lot was so tight when we went to load out later. Um, 
we kind of had to, he, he would kind of grab it, crunch it up, throw it in a pile, and then I would grab it, kind of finish crunching it up and throw it in the dumpster. So it ended up working out really, really well. Uh, even though this was a really small lot, it worked out really well having two machines there. And once it took us about 45 to 50 minutes to get this thing on the ground. And then once we had it on the ground, we had all of the debris uh, hauled out of here in about three hours. Um, <clears throat> it was about an hour, a little over an hour round trip for a truck. We had uh, three boxes, two trucks running, so we were we were switching out uh, pretty, pretty regular. So, but uh, long story short, uh, huge huge help or huge thanks to uh, Matt for coming down. Uh, he definitely helped me out more than I helped him out. So um, I owe him one, owe him one for sure. But not to go into a whole bunch of detail here, but th there's a couple of things I want to point out, guys. You, you, man, you're doing demo work. It, it's you just getting in a hurry never pays off. You really got to uh, pay attention to what you're doing. And even though sometimes it looks like a guy's just swinging a track hoe around and, and knocking shit down, um, that's not really how you go about it. There's there is a rhyme or reason to why we're doing what we're doing. Um, the first thing you want to do is, as you see in the very beginning of this, is, is try to get everything uh, inside the house. Keep your mess uh, radius as small as you can. It just helps you tremendously later. This house here was taller than what my machine could reach, which is, is very dangerous. I, I, I urge you to be very careful and very cautious if you know what you're doing or if you don't know what you're doing because you can get in trouble real quick if you got stuff hanging up there where you can't reach it. So basically what my uh, attack process was is, is I would knock out enough interior walls to loosen the roof. This house did not have trusses. It was stick frame rafters. If it did have trusses, I probably would have put the stick extension on. I did bring it with me uh, just in case we needed it. But basically because of the way the house was built, and I never really got into a situation where I felt uncomfortable with my reach. I knew whenever something was gonna come down, uh, I knew pretty much exactly where it was gonna go. Uh, I was able to control it or knew I was gonna be able to control it either out of the road or off my machine or off Matt's machine. So we didn't use the extension basically because I felt like it was better for me to have the thumb on my machine, have access to my thumb. Uh, versus having a little bit of extra reach and, it, and the thing does work good but uh, I was just afraid of the awkwardness was uh, not going to be enough of a gain. Long story short um, I never felt uncomfortable I, I felt completely in control of the house uh, the whole time uh, with the reach I had and having the thumb available to me was more important than the super stick. The other really key part of this equation is, is this is Matt and his machine here is Matt has a tremendous amount of house, tremendous amount of experience doing demo. He's probably done uh, three times more demo than I have. Uh, with that being said, I've got quite a bit of demo experience myself. So you get two experienced guys working together on a job like this. And uh, it's you, you don't even have to talk to each other. Just one kind of knows what the other one's going to do. And both of us pretty much know what the house is going to do. So it, 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 it works really well. It just, it, I just can't say how. It was just a well-tuned well orchestra uh, the entire day. I mean, everything went, went just as planned. The, the house landed where it was supposed to. Uh, we didn't interrupt anything uh, going on, traffic, the whole, the whole nine yards. So, but uh, long story short, you guys get into these older houses and especially if you're into a tight lot uh, take all precautions you have available to you uh, to make sure it, it does what it needs to like i said you know i uh, called in reinforcements here with matt and and i've done the same for him before in the past and another thing i'll mention some of you guys are wondering how come we're not uh, didn't have either a, a dumpster or a dump truck on site and loading some of this stuff you know straight in instead of kind of piling it here and it's for multiple reasons probably the first and the main reason is if you guys can see from some of these aerial photos this was an extremely tight lot i mean matt's track is not even sitting on this guy's property we got permission from the neighbor uh to sit over that fence right there see that fence right there at the corner 
that is the property line. I mean, that wall of the house is the property line. So we were trying to be as respectful as we could to the neighbor over there for sure. And uh, not get anything over on him unnecessarily or cause any property damage to him. So I didn't want a dumpster there to uh, take up any space where we had something to walk around. If I needed to get a machine where I needed to get a machine, uh, I didn't want an obstacle in the way. Uh, the other thing is, is we knocked this house down, we're able to basically what we call crunch it up, make it into smaller pieces so it, it's easier to load. So every time, uh, you don't want to handle it any more times than you need to, but every time you do handle it, uh, it kind of kind of helps make it in smaller pieces so it's easier to load and e easier on the trucks. Uh, the trucking company we use to transport this, they basically have 40 yard roll off dumpsters and we end up putting them over to the left here. And basically, my, I had to sit on top of my scrap metal pile to load, if that tells you how, uh, how tight, tight an area we had. So basically, we showed up at six o'clock. Uh, we put this house on the ground in a pile. And then, um, at, I think it was about 7.30, our first roll off showed up. And then from there, the house was down. We didn't have to worry about anything hanging over our heads or nobody was holding nothing while somebody was loading up. Uh, loading a dumpster. So from that point there, we we started and we just switched gears 100%. You know, Matt was kind of uh, crunching and throwing in a pile. And then I was loading in the dozer. My water guy's not doing the best here. Look at that dust cloud. I think he's running out of water and we didn't know it. So, but but long story short, uh, everything went everything went good. I'm going to, uh, you can see here, the house is, is pretty much on the ground at this point. We're getting ready to switch into uh, to loadout mode. In the sake of keeping this video from getting too long and boring you guys absolutely to death, we're probably gonna do a part one, part two on this. I've got a lot of really good video of uh, loading this house out and uh, kind of how the lot finished up at the end of the day. So I hope you guys enjoyed the first half of this and uh, stay tuned for the stay tuned for the second half. Uh, it's gonna be just about as good. Uh, it it was it, the job went job went really smooth not to spill the beans on how it all went but we had uh had a pretty good day so as always guys thanks for watching appreciate it we've got a lot of new subscribers i hope you guys are enjoying the channel and uh, any chance you get to uh, give any feedback that is always greatly appreciated uh, if you haven't done so yet hit that subscribe button if you want to make sure you uh, catch the, the next video uh, be sure you hit that notification bell and if you like what you're seeing, don't hesitate to uh, hit the thumbs up, guys. Appreciate it. All right, guys, we're going to call this phase one. The house is in a pile. Phase two, get her packed up and shipped out of here. So hope you enjoyed the first half, and we'll see you on the second half.